five weeks ago, I abandoned two sets of people on a remote Pacific island. Bon voyage, guys. One, a group of wealthy professionals. What are you doing? I'm looking for the Hilton. The other, let's do this. A group working for less than the national average wage. I'll pull up in the concrete jungles, find your way around them. To see if those from opposite ends of the wealth spectrum could work together. That's their working class roots, that. But from early on, it seemed they'd never see eye to eye. I don't give a shit how much money they got in their bank. Nobody talks to me like a cunt. These are not my sort of people. Scumbags. Absolute scumbags. Until beaten down by exhaustion and on the brink of starvation. Oh, God. Are you all right, Ali? They finally decided to unite. I think it'd be good if we built a canopy, everyone get together as a team. Yeah. Do you think maybe we've merged? <laughs> Tonight, I discover how they all coped when pushed to the limit. I thought that this was going to be like Robinson Crusoe, but with a little bit of saint was thrown in with it. It felt like marathon after marathon after marathon. We were starving. Our bodies were eating themselves. And how it felt, finally, to return to civilization. When I think back, I think, I've, I've actually done it. But thank God it's over, because it was horrific. Five weeks after marooning 16 people on the island, I'm returning to find out what they did right and where they went wrong. One thing I'm pretty surprised about, actually, though, is just how the groups never really learn to pool their resources and come together. When you're fighting each other in two groups, you lose your power. But despite it all, 13 of the original castaways survived the island. Wow, some big smiles. You've been through some grim times. What was the hardest bit? I think it's, I think it's the lack of control, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. when it rains, you're getting drenched and you've got to keep the fire from going out and you're freezing cold. It sucks the life out of you, I think. The island calls the shots all the while, yeah, you're yeah. just holding on. But you've endured, so good for you. Come and show me your camp. Go on, then. Wow. It was only after four weeks living at opposite ends of the same beach that the two teams came together and built their joint camp. So welcome to the Pig's Head. This was the place where we created our communal, our communal home. And we could shelter under here if it rained, and also it gave us shade during the day. So this was the place that you actually came together from? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How long ago was this? Um, a week. It's not until the wild had really beaten the crap out of you. And you go, actually, we, maybe we need each other. But to get to that point, they had to overcome their negative impressions of each other when they first met, after just 24 hours on the island. Hey, look, there's people there as well. Hello. 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 Hi, sorry, beg your pardon. I thought, wow, I was just like, oh my God, these lot are posh. A lot of their conversation seems to be raised voices and a lot of swear words. The initial assumptions were that we were posh and nobody likes posh people. And this is a, yeah. my name's Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> and this is biblical. In their first days on the island, they attempted to live together, but quickly began to battle each other when they should have been saving vital energy for their bigger fight against the elements. Look, it's just gone tits up in there. Is the fire still going? Just. When it was raining, the only people actually going to collect firewood were our team. Some people are just doing bloody nothing. That's not a moot point, that's a fact. That happened. Guys, I need more sticks, like, really, really hurry up. There's a lot of people in that group that wanted to order people around. Guys, we all need to get sticks. The fire's going out. Fuck that. I didn't want someone telling me what to do. I was just angry about it. No, I'm not your little skivvy. Yeah, a bit of rain. It's actually quite refreshing. They were all a little lazy in the other camp. I mean, there was the feast of wood. The whole beaches were completely and utterly piled with wood. I think the other group thought they were in Benidorm. Oh, old young chap, I would say to you, Phil, I'll go and collect some firewood for you, Phil, don't worry. My name's Barnes. We've switched on the central heating, so we're all going to warm ourselves briefly now. <laughs> Panic over. 
Is it easy to misjudge people, do you think, on first impressions? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. When you're a bit nervous, you, you, all of us naturally put up a bit yeah, of a... God, the guy come up to me, like, really posh voices. It was, to me, whoa, I was, like, mind blown. It was, like you see, it's just the front. And I compare myself to others and I think, oh, they've got this job or they've got this life and I'll never have that. You know, I know from my military experiences, you, you know, the army brings people together from all different backgrounds. You have to get on, you have to not judge someone by that. You have to create connections if you're gonna be effective as a soldier and also as a survivor. Unable to work together, the team split. With the wealthy group setting up at the southern end of the beach and the less well-off further north. But there were some island inhabitants who did want to share camp. Do you not think it's ironic that this is like a little paradise, yet everything tries to bloody kill you? Oh, my God, termites everywhere! Sleeping on the island can be described with one word, horrific. You have a choice. Do you want to stay in the jungle and get eaten alive by ants? Do you want to go and lie on the beach and then get eaten alive by sand fleas? So Tam did a huge amount of work uh, building beds. It looks a little bit like a Maharaja's palace. Failing to construct raised beds had consequences for the other team. And has this been the worst camp for sandflies? We spent 14 days on the ground, on the ground virtually, yeah. so that didn't help. And was that grim? That was unbelievably yeah. grim. You can well imagine being bitten alive. Yeah. Fuck off, flies. The bites are overtaking my life at the minute. All, all I'm doing is just scratching up my arm from toe to head. I am just completely smothered. Ben and Mercedes, honestly, they were, they were like corn beef. They were just covered. Absolutely covered. Like living torture. The ant bites were the worst. They would itch for days. You can't sleep somewhere where there's all ants because they're going to go up your trousers. And when I mean ants in the pants, you are going to have ants in your pants and you don't want them. The worst thing at the beginning was just the ants. And once we sort of got rid of that with all the ash spreading out all around. Is that what you did? You yeah, said just well, literally all around my bed. Thing. This is hot coal, but I think it would kill any insects that are on the floor now. What are we doing? Are we covering the whole floor? Yeah. At least they're killing any little rodent bastards or insects that are going up to them. If they're wondering what they said then, that was rodent bastard yeah, insects. Yeah, I know. I don't know why I said rodent. <laughs> <laughs> the islanders were also resourceful when it came to items they found washed up on the shore. Oh, my God. A packet of green tea. Not opened. <laughs> Stripped of the essentials of modern life, they regularly scavenged for anything that could make life on the island more comfortable. What is that? Toothbrush. Need that. That was your supermarket. Every morning, wake up, have a walk down and see what the tide's brought in for you. It's interesting to think that I have no idea whose toothbrush this was. The worst thing about that is we all shared the toothbrushes in camp as well, so... Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's pretty rank, but they did smell of plaque. I find the blackest piece of ash. Simply dab it so you get a healthy portion of ash. It's salty, tastes like fish, like off fish. <laughs> and then you simply apply. Sounds disgusting. And scrub away. <laughs> it's not only refreshing, it's whitening as well. The sea's been great at bringing things in, washing stuff up. Flip-flops, juggling oh, balls. Down, juggling down. balls, very important for the yeah. survivor. I mean, where would you be without the juggling balls? <laughs> Look at all that. I'm just oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, my God, how can a comb feel and look so brilliant? <laughs> we just found so much useful rubbish. It was Incredibly shameful being a human being, actually, being on the island and seeing the crap that washed up. While I ensured there was enough vegetation and wildlife on the island to keep both groups alive... I don't think there is anything on this flipping island. It's so disappointing. We've gone for hours. Divided into rival camps, they had to work even harder to find it, catch it and kill it. We've been lost for about two hours. I am not going in that jungle anymore looking for food. When they did find food... That yucca. Oh, my God. Just in it again. They had to make the decision of whether to help their rival group survive. I think the right thing to do is to give them a couple of pieces of yucca. That is, I think, it's the right thing. Everybody was equally hungry, so I was always in favour of sharing the yucca with the other group. 
Good morning. morning. Morning, morning. Should we give them a sample? Do you want a bit? I'll have one piece if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Oh. A lot of roast potatoes. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. If they found yucca, they'd give us some yucca. We weren't in a position to share a lot of food because we didn't catch a lot of food. Let me have a bit. Thank you. We were like the charity. Oh, they're salty. They just thought they sort of had to mother us along. Or oh, we'll give them a little bit to sort of keep them alive. Thank you. There are birds here, big birds. Although they shared vegetables, Precious protein was another matter entirely. Ladies and gentlemen, Barnes! Barnsy boy! I'm so impressed! It started a tit for tat that lasted for much of their stay. Guys, we have a chicken and chips! I thought, actually, here we are, we're surviving. We have absolutely nothing. We've spent all day going off into this jungle, getting scratched to death, falling over. And I thought, no, we're not bloody sharing it. We've killed these birds, and we're jolly well going to eat everything that we can. So I apologise to the other group now that actually it was me that didn't want to share the food. We're going to eat the skin, everything. Everything, everything. Every single morsel. But I think, frankly, if you hadn't have all been so bloody lazy, then I might have been a bit keener to share it in the first place. Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of meat on it. You know, they ate three chickens last night. What? Three chickens that come bad. And I remember I walked up there and they were arguing over chicken bones and how they were going to turn these chicken bones into stock. And I was thinking, chicken bones? Three chickens. Fuck that shit. When they caught them three chickens and didn't share them, I was like, nah, done. This is when you see people's true characters. But people start fighting dirty. Scumbags. Absolute scumbags. That's why the world's as fucked up as it is. Because of people like these. The less wealthy group's anger had barely settled three days later when they captured an iguana. It's gonna go, Phil. Phil, do it. Finish him off. Sorry, mate. We're eating tonight! Guys, are we going to share this out? No, we're not. No, no we're not. We're going to cook it now. No. We're gonna cook... no, they had three chickens. Do we think this is three chickens worth? I think it's three chickens worth. Yeah, exactly. I think we deserve it. Beautiful. It's your summer barbecue. Like an orgasm in your mouth. I actually felt really bad, like really guilty. So that played with my conscience a little bit. I don't think it did with the others. I think they just enjoyed it too much. The iguana, if I'm honest, hands down, one of the best things. I loved it. I just try it, it tastes like turkey. It's even making me mouth water now. Like thinking of it again. Hey, right, bro, my stomach feels full. <laughs> yeah. I got energy. Ah, well done, team. What a day, we've survived. Which one's in the tree? Whoa! My hell! <gasps> To survive on the island, the wealthy and less well-off groups had to be on constant alert for unexpected danger. One of the most dangerous things in the jungle on these islands is dead wood or, or coconuts falling. Poor old Tan got hit on the head by a coconut. It's a coconut um, death tree. You're lucky. Yeah, yeah, People are regularly killed by falling coconuts. Yeah. Night, Jimmy. Night, Tekka. Night, Sam. Oh, fuck. Did that hit you? That was right on my head. You serious? Just on the side, it hit me. Holy crap. It was so terrifying, because it was, thank God, a young coconut, so it was squishy. If one of those, like, bad boys came down and hit me, I would be dead. Here she is. Just drop that and see how heavy it is. Drop it on the back and watch the show. I was kind of doing the old schoolboy falling over, like, I'm absolutely fine, it didn't even hurt. Absolutely wrecked. Barnes, there's more. And as cameraman Sam discovered, foraging for coconuts in broad daylight can be just as treacherous. Oh, we're not. Sam. Oh, I just whacked myself right in What have you done? <laughs> just whack your balls. Yeah. <laughs> Wanking that pole straight up there and fucking slipped. 
While the islanders were split into two rival camps, each faced their daily struggles. Someone let the fire go out last night. Yeah, we haven't okay. got no fire at all. For the less wealthy camp, maintaining their fire was a constant battle. Someone's got to bend down and blow, man. That fire was the thorn in my side. Please, go, please, man. No, it's gone. You did let your fire go out a lot and then you needed help. Why did that it's always too happen? too small. And what we needed to do was build it off with our kindling and everything and then get the big logs on. And you're right, the big logs, because actually it then burns under the big log, even when it's raining, and all you need is a tiny little ember in the morning and you're away. They get smoke from their fire. Yeah, wankers. Unable to keep their own fire alight, the less wealthy camp had no choice but to seek help. We had to go to the other camp to get a little ember. Hello, 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 hello. Getting their members, it was like a, a tail tucked between your legs. Our fire's gone out, but no fire at all. They didn't really want the charity from them, because like the rich give it to the poor. Smoking fire. Hopefully we can keep it alive this time. Doing the walk of shame. It was embarrassing. Every time we got back, it was like, right, this time, we are not going back there again. No way. Oh, for fuck's sake. This fire isn't going out. And then by the morning, we'll be back there again. <laughs> oh, incoming. Incoming. I guess fire's out. What happened? Someone let the fire go out last night. Everyone goes to sleep, wake up in the morning, it's not there. I'm not proud to admit it. But we all felt a little smug that, um, that, oh, here they come again, they're coming for fire. Oh, my God. We were in this sort of position of power. Don't waft it too much or it will just explode in your face. I think that they probably thought that we were all complete bastards. Um, and I dare say they were probably right. After fire, finding food was the islanders' most demanding challenge. But all of them failed to capitalise on the abundant source and nourishment encircling the island. We always say the ocean is your larder and this should have been your greatest resource. What do you think you haven't done so well in terms of fishing? Like with me, I, I, I caught one, but it was a puffer fish, so we couldn't even eat it. We've got two fish in the whole five weeks. We three, three, I think we got in three our one. Fish. We've tried and tried, and we don't know what we were doing wrong. Oh my God, there's fish! There's loads of fish! God, I could so eat a fish, couldn't you? We all tried our hand at fishing. It's awful. But those fish were just unapologetic. They were bouncing around out there, almost shouting for us to come and try and catch them, but we couldn't. Doreen, what was it? It was a fish. Fish, fish. Why didn't fish. you get it then? I didn't have the right tools. And what about the nets? Because experience says net fishing is very efficient, you cover a big area, it works while you're asleep. Why didn't you persevere more with that? Well, when we put the net out, we thought, excellent, this is going to work. And then nothing. With around 500 local species of edible fish evading the islanders, they even tried once to fish together. There's fish in the sea and we're going to eat them. I thought that these tropical beauties would be swimming into our net and that we were going to be having these luscious sort of fat fish. Together, the groups attached a found fishing net to a float and weighted it just offshore. That net's going out too far. Me, Barnes and Tan were swimming the nets back and it was quite a strong current. Tan looks like he's going under. He, can't, he looks like he can't keep up. It's tight now. It is... So strong. You just don't realise the currents out past the end of those rocks were just really, really strong. And you're like thinking to yourself, I can't do it, I can't, I'm too tired. This is a bad, bad idea. Bravo to Sierra. Bravo, this is Sierra, go ahead. Three guys have gone to collect the fishing nets. They're in deep water. Yeah, Roger, we'll launch. It's just those currents. You just didn't know where, which way they were going. It was just so terrifying. What are you doing, Mercedes? And all of a sudden, Mercedes whipped her top up and she ran in. Mercedes, come back! 
I tell you what, it was hard. It, it was hard going against the current. She weren't the fittest, but she was she was definitely one of the bravest. She is strong, that girl. Swimming teacher to the rescue. She is a good swimmer. Mercedes's courage helped prevent a difficult situation turning into something far more dangerous. You all right? Are you topless? She just went straight in. Ah, less buoyancy as you could ask for. I thought, I'm not getting this T-shirt wet again, because it takes so long to dry it. I was probably, like, flipping Shamu the whale. Let me get you your top, Mercedes. She whipped everything out. You could hardly miss them, even from half a mile out. I mean, they were like two red flashing beacons. So, did you catch any fish? I'm not even a bloody fish. See, so he can give you other stuff apart from just fish. You got all your limpets and clams and yeah, all that did, stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those, yeah. yeah. Do you not think you could have eaten more of those, though? Yeah, there was a lot of people who, who decided not to eat those kind of things, but then when the hunger really kicked in, we had no choice. But the limpets and the snails did actually turn out to be surprisingly yeah. tasty. Yeah. I thought they were yeah. vile. Barbecued limpets. Barbecued limpets. Barbecued limpets were all right, yeah. Deluded the yeah. lot of you. Yeah. When it comes to desert island survival, you can't afford to be a fussy eater. Those who adapt win out. They are what we call giant limpets. Winkles and snails are in there, and crabs. Some crabs are in there. Oh, God. Got to eat its tail. Let's just make it its prawn cocktail sauce. That is disgusting. I haven't got a clue what I'm eating. I'm just ripping it to bits. Any good? No. I can't eat that. The fussiest person in camp was Ben. He just wouldn't eat. Nah, I won't eat them. But why, dude? When they go in my mouth, I could nearly vomit. He didn't eat for 20 days. 20 days. He had, like, two limpets just because he had to have a bit of energy. <laughs> Who's got a drink on a go? I've never ate shit, but it, it was almost like, as I imagined, shit would taste like. <laughs> I mean, these things were huge. Some of them were like half the size of a coconut, which was another thing I didn't like. <laughs> Overriding their taste buds proved equally challenging when the wealthier group discovered one of the island's more exotic foods. What's that? Vomit food. Vomit food does not sound massively appealing. The vomit fruit. That probably was one of the most rank things that I've ever tasted in my entire life. But it's really, really good for you, isn't it? <laughs> Vit vitamins oh. and minerals in it. I will eat it. <laughs> that vomit fruit is the most revolting thing I have ever smelt. And I've smelt necrotic ulcers. The thought that you did it once would normally put people off. So the fact that we actually kept eating these things showed how much we were hungry and that people were desperate to get anything in, really. Oh, that's going to make me vomit. That is going to make me vomit. Surviving in extreme conditions proved to be more than just a physical challenge. There's a snake. It was emotionally demanding for the less wealthy team's only vegetarian, Errants. Killing that snake was one of the hardest things I had to ever do. I'm so sorry. But it had to be done for the benefit of the whole team. After compromising his values, the reality of living in a hostile environment hit home. This is not a holiday. This is hell on earth. And Aaron's decided he couldn't go on. Aaron's obviously was the first to leave in the island. What do you think? What do you think he found so unbearable? Every reason he gave for leaving, and I was like, I want to leave too, but I'm not leaving. And he was a fit young man. Like he he could stay. He's going. Yeah, I'm going. Oh no! I had enough, and I just wanted to go home and just, you know, be with my family. And another shock departure wasn't far off, as with so little sustenance, the less wealthy team hit an all-time low. I'm struggling to do a water run. I just feel weak. You don't even get hunger pains or your stomach doesn't make noises. It just kind of 
starts dying, basically. She's like, I'm gonna be sick. Being knackered and being starving, it just breaks you down as a person. The physical strain took the greatest toll on Mercedes, who just couldn't keep up with daily tasks. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just having a bit of a moment. I just feel, well, I'm so unfit. I hate it. I feel like my body's packing up. And I really, 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 really well and truly feel like I'm disappointing everybody. Oh, Mercedes, I was gutted when she left. But when she had decided enough was enough, there was no, no way of moving Mercedes at all. She was quite happy to lie there, get bitten to pieces, and she, she didn't really care about anything. So why did she leave? She, she didn't feel that she could do when she could because her weight was an issue for her. It's actually about things like self-doubt, you know, not believing we're capable. That really is a lesson of the island. You're hungry, tired, beaten up, but you stay. Yeah. You but... dig deep, but you don't yeah. give up. And that's what separates you. I love you all. When I left, it, I, it did upset me a lot. I didn't pull my weight nowhere near as much as what I should have done. But since I've come home, I walk now, I walk a lot more. I really shifted myself big time. And I'm a lot happier, a lot, lot happier. My fanny's killing us, like. <laughs> Let me show you. My knickers have got salt on, my skin's got salt on, and then I'm sweating just where my knicker line sits. I think it just needs to get dry, it's one of them things, and it's just sit with my fanny out. <laughs> <laughs> For some castaways, island life just rubbed them up the wrong way. Could you not add a bit of charcoal from the fire? I have tried, it stings. I don't know whether because I put it on still hot. So I fucking burnt myself on top of what I've already got. Oh, Jesus, Sammy. I'm just determined to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to my boyfriend, I think, what the fuck is this? <laughs> You know, hygiene is one of these things that's really important in a survivor. And you guys have done pretty well on that. You, you look in good shape, you haven't had massive infections. Or how have you kept on top of that? We tried our best to keep clean, but we do all absolutely stink. It smells pretty bad, but actually you'd think, <laughs> you'd think it could be much worse. I think the fire is the best deodorant and the best yeah. odour toilette. Yeah. It just stops you smelling of B.O. You think for all of you not washing for a month, it's going to be really bad. But actually, you're right, you just cover it up with other, <laughs> with other stronger smells. But tackling body odour was the least of the islanders' personal hygiene issues. I might go and do a poo. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Dehydration left some more bunged up than others. Just been to the toilet. 15 days. What? Yeah. I felt like I was giving birth. It was awful. Me and Ali were kind of in a bit of a competition because she hadn't been and I hadn't been. And then she had been for her, so I started thinking, I'm in trouble now. I'm going to go and show you where I pooed. Oh, this is just every boy's dream, you know? Everybody used to ask us every day in the camp, have you been? Have you been? It started getting to the thing where, has Laura been for a poo yet? And I got a pain, and I woke Phil up, and I said, Phil, it's happening. <laughs> You're now entering. The girls' toilet. So this is the girls' toilet. So this is exclusive access. And we learned very quickly that hibiscus leaves are the best leaves to clean yourself on the island. Not the ones with the holes in. So that is, that's your perfect bit of toilet tissue right here. It was a little over three weeks. And I went and, oh my God, it was the best feeling in the world. I didn't even feel the pain because I was too excited. It was going circular because circular, I was so much. It was like a Cumberland sausage. Oh, that's disgusting. I was going round and round and round. That's absolutely filthy, you and know it that. It was probably about the size of my head. All right, love. All right, that is more than enough, dear. In the wealthy camp, toilet etiquette hit a new low when a mystery islander started leaving unwanted gifts. We had the phantom pua that kept sort of leaving the sort of camp, going three metres to the left and dropping one. The phantom pua struck ever closer to the camp. I think we found the phantom pua. <laughs> Do you think it's a bit close? Just a little. <laughs> James, we wondered what you were doing. 
Seriously, I was probably opening my bowels two, three, four times a day. I tell you now, that tree was not wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just boof, comes out. It's not fun. God, I can't stop thinking about lasagna. The islanders may not have found, caught or killed much food, but that didn't stop them from talking about it. Homemade lasagna and chips, right? Oof. With Mexicana cheese each layer, and I think it would be a Mexican lasagna. Oh, my God. The subject of food was very, very apparent, and it was something that was discussed a lot. I would absolutely murder all of you to get a nice pizza. Oh, uh, just something simple, like <laughs> buffalo mozzarella, sun-dried tomatoes. Ooh. That's it. Ooh. Where's that from? What pizza shop are you going on? No, like, like at Italian restaurants. Ah. Oh. Best one so far, chicken Kiev pizza. What? Yes. What a chicken Kiev pizza. Chicken pizza is pizza covered in garlic on a pizza. There's not a grain of anything that you want to pass your lips in sight. And all everybody sat and talked about was bloody food. The food situation became so dire the wealthy group rolled the dice with an ill-fated attempt to raft to the neighbouring island. If we get one loose bit, we're screwed. It was never going to get very far because it was just so heavy and the, the rope and the things that we had to, to lash it together just weren't man enough. The ambitious but flimsy raft hit choppy waters. And the mission went from risky to downright dangerous. Every bit is loose. At this point, we were pretty much starving. But if you pull your weight and you all get on together, then you can be victorious. A second expedition was planned, and this time a modified raft was built with help from both camps. What's a good bit of teamwork, eh? Teamwork makes a dream work. OK, so this is your raft. Yes. Iteration number two on the basis that all the survival is about learning from failure. Yes. Well, the first raft, we went too grand, so we used big pieces of wood because we thought that actually we were going to all be transported on the raft, which was probably a but disaster. Yeah, disaster. <laughs> I like this because this is compact, yeah. it's efficient, and you're using the net, which is smart. One thing was an abundance on this island, sadly, is plastic bottles, but for a survivor, you've been able to use that, that buoyancy yeah. there and build something that's actually got really good flotation. Yeah. And it was so light, I mean, you could just literally pull it through the water. It's like a pedal boat. Keep kicking. I just love that. Just going out in the deep sea and just risking it on this little raft all by manpower, just holding onto it and kicking it. It's the most tiring thing I've ever done. The crew was rewarded with its first sugar hit in weeks. I can't believe I've actually even seen pineapples growing. It just doesn't seem real. But the exciting discovery had some unexpected consequences. I think I'm feeling a little high on pineapples. Oh, my God, it was like ecstasy. It was just this huge sugar rush that went, went to you. I mean, we were all as high as kites. Darling, I love you. <laughs> Oh, mate, I'm rushing, I'm buzzing. It really gelled us as a group because we were having a joint venture. Woo! Yeah. You would have thought that a fruit would ever make you so happy. <laughs> we ended up coming together when it actually got to the point that we couldn't survive apart and we needed to come together. We needed okay. the manpower. That's the bones of it. By that point, both groups were pretty much at crisis point in terms of starvation. And with a big group of us together, then we could actually be a lot more efficient. All right, they're better first with bowling and fielding. Let's do this! Yeah, boy! Buoyed by their successful raft expedition, the islanders planned more joint ventures. That's a ball! Catch, 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 catch. When we sort of all start spending more time together, we just started chilling. And the more we started chilling, the more we just thought, actually, we'd get on with these. Is everyone listening? Yeah. yeah. I think it'd be a really good idea if we built a canopy over this fire as a team. Yeah, well done, Ben. Yeah. Do, you, do you think maybe we've merged? <laughs> <laughs> I think the way we came together was really lovely because it was just organic. It just occurred and grew 
any nonsense to do with where you've come from, what you've got, or any egos and any sort of fight for power had, had gone. And everybody just wanted to get on. Unofficial merge. Yay! When you did come together, everything started to change. Yeah. yeah. I think the last two weeks have been blinding. Yeah, absolutely. Do you regret, therefore, leaving that so late? I do. I do. Stay together. You all brought so many different survival skills and traits and character personalities, but was there anyone who really stood out who kind of surprised you? For me, I think Ben yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. As we were all fading, Ben just... Yeah. It was lovely. And was, and was off. But as he finished the communal shelter, Ben's time on the island was about to be cut short. Oh, man. One of the bits just hit me in the eyeball. Oh, right. Are you OK? Fuck. My safety team was scrambled to assess Ben's scratched cornea. Oh, right, yes, I see. It feels a hell of a lot better, trust me. If there are issues or are problems, then you really shouldn't be here. Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to lose my sight. If this was my eye, I would be going. I've started something, mate, and I'm finishing it. I'm not going. I'm not. But the doctor's words soon sunk in. I think my girls would be proud of me for what I've achieved, and I think they definitely would have wanted me to come off. So I'm going. Bye, Ben! Bye, Ben! Bye. See you later, son! I was absolutely gutted, and but I still say now they had to take me off their kicking and screaming. Let me take a look at that. Look to your right. Yeah, look to your left. He actually had a scratch in the eye. And um, if it's left unattended, basically he could get infected. That's, that's a major risk. Yeah, I would have been a monk to have stayed on there and went against doctor's orders. So they were right. And would you believe it? Look what washed up in the surf this morning. A little bit of green. What do you think? Stylish, huh? With just two days left, the remaining castaways found cause for celebration with the island's first, albeit mock, wedding. You are now married and you may kiss. Yay! Yay! Obviously, you've formed lots of close relationships. Any romantic relationships or anything you think they might develop on? I feel a divorce coming on. <laughs> well, you, I think legally you have to be married for a year before you get the divorce, so you're committed for another 363 days. <laughs> but I don't think there are any close relationships, though, that we've... No, no romance. Everyone's so disgusting. I don't think there's any possibility for romance. But unbeknownst to most of the other campmates, two islanders kept sneaking off together. When I first met Phil, on that board, I did think, oh, I've got a typical London Cockney geezer here. Hey! <laughs> Loud, obnoxious, a little bit rude. But five weeks of island life provided unique opportunities for romance to blossom. That's why I used to do a lot of the water runs. That was the time I got to, like, put the work in, really, do you know what I mean? If it didn't work then, it weren't going to work. You know what I mean? We're best friend in here. One who helps me with everything. And then Laura was like, I'm scared of the dark. She was like, can I sleep next to someone? I was like, yeah, go on, all right, oh, that'd be me. I'll, I'll, I'll sleep next to you. You are gorgeous, even with all your sandy face. To this day, I, I look at them sometimes and I think, I don't know how you've done it, but there's just something there. We did have a few sneaky little kisses, which were nice. And we were inseparable, completely inseparable. Right, Laura? <laughs> she is so nice, but like my family adore her. And obviously her family, they're they're wicked, they're wicked, but they're all Geordies, I can't even understand them. They all need subtitles under them when they talk, I can't understand a word they say. We decided to get a, a romantic tattoo, didn't mm, we? Definitely. My love heart that we'll look at forever. With a perfect sunset in. Sand, sea, everything. And with two people walking down the beach. Holding hands. Like we've done every day yeah, near yeah. enough. After 35 days on the island. This fire's obviously been burning. You guys want to put it out. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. The 13 original islanders finished the adventure of a lifetime. Right, let's go home. Yeah. Like rescuing a sea lion. <laughs>
I thought, I can't believe it's over. It was a surreal moment for me. I think I was the quietest I had ever been. I was like, yes, I have done this. Like, I have literally proven everyone wrong in the pub. <laughs> Island was an angry, intelligent organism. It did not like us. I feel I'm on top of the world right now. Absolutely. It was the best feeling. Five weeks you think is never going to end. It felt like 25 years. Oh my god, amazing! Oh look at that. This food. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. Oh. oh Apples, bananas, pineapple. You're back in civilization. I couldn't be proud of how you guys done. There is one place, obviously, that's empty. Oh, my God, there he is. Oh, me oh, Ben! Oh. <laughs> my friendship with Ben, it was a big part of me getting through that item. Me and Sammy just clicked instantly, and she was by my rock. The band's back together. Let's eat. Yeah, yeah let's eat. Hey. Shaking. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> it was amazing. Absolutely unreal. Oh my god. I could cry. This is better than winning the lobby. The islanders had no contact with their loved ones for 35 days. Ollie! Ollie. Hey baby, how you doing? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I did it, baby, I did it. I'm so proud of you, it's unbelievable. <gasps> oh, my God, I've missed you so much, you wouldn't believe it. I don't think anything can prepare you for that island. Oh, you're right, Nora. How was it? <laughs> it's, it's just... It's been yeah. so hard. People think being happy is earning more money when it's not. And when you're on the island and you're stripped of everything, you realise what true happiness really is. I've missed you so much. The islanders' experience didn't just starve their taste buds, their whole bodies went through a massive transformation. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> I look quite I look skinny. Like... <gasps> uh, oh, look at these little arms. Yeah, matchsticks, mate. There is nothing there. <gasps> I look like a convict. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look, it's all soft. Wow. The snow pressure came. There's no VO, there's no nothing. Sometimes I'll think back and I'll think, this is cold water, fresh out of a tap. Water? I haven't had a boiler, it's not brown, it's not got a beetle in, it's not steel. I haven't had to wring it through my sock. Like, <laughs> I just think, it's like magic. Coming home was a total shock. It took a long time to get out of the rhythm of the island. I just struggled with reality. I mean, I didn't go into a shop for over a week because I, I found all of this very difficult to sort of get back into having money, doing things. If you wanted something, you could have it. I thought I was going to go there and miss my mum and my nan the most, but it was, it was totally different. The biggest thing was my dad. I want to tell him I love him and I'm sorry for everything. Sorry for being rude. Sorry for being an absolute arsehole to him, really. I feel this moment has been a really, really long time coming and I can't bloody wait. Hey, How you doing? How you doing? Hello! <laughs> Got all this time to think. You realise that the only thing that's important in life is people. How much did you miss me? Is that all? Yeah. Not bigger than that. Okay, that's big. I learned a lot about myself really. Got back and me and my dad have gotten like a house on fire. Oh I'm good. Oh, my God. Before I went on the island, I was relying on other people to do this for me and do that, where now I just do everything myself. Mm -hmm. I definitely, 100%, went on that island as a boy and come off it as a man, 100%. I grew up on that island. When I went on the island, I don't think I realised quite how much mental baggage I took on there. 
um, and everybody on the island um, helped me in some way, shape or form to become a better person. What did I learn about myself on the island? I learned that um, I'm a survivor. In a hundred years from now, that island will still be there. It'll still have the same types of wildlife on. The tide will still come in, the tide will still go out. We are completely irrelevant to that island and that is what it felt like. Thank you.